Hey guys, it's Will with Vinyl Appreciation Society. You are watching seven super underrated Smashing Pumpkin songs from the Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness era. That includes the Aeroplane Flies High box set. This is such a monumental undertaking to pick seven songs from that era where, I mean, if you follow the Pumpkin's career, you'll know that they re-released Melancholy as a five CD reissue, and then they re-released Aeroplane Flies High with an extra CD on top of what was originally in there. So six CDs, so there's 11 CDs worth of stuff to comb through to make this list, and I only gave myself seven songs, so there will definitely be more videos of this nature from the Melancholy era. So if you're, like, there are at least two songs that are really, really glaringly missing from this list from from my perspective is in terms of my favorite underrated pumpkin songs from this era because I wanted to save good stuff for the other list because I know we're going to have to do more and I didn't want to like wade into the next one being like, oh, okay, all we have left are these instrumental like demos or whatever, you know what I mean? So um, we're just going to kick this off. Number seven on my list of super underrated pumpkin songs from the Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness era is Transformer. This is the... Uh, this is a track that's on the 33 single in the, well, I mean, uh, on the single itself, I think. And because the, so when the singles were officially released um, versus when they were put on the box set, some of them got, if I remember correctly, I might be wrong about this, but if I remember correctly, some of them got extra songs added to them when they appeared on the box set that were not on the original release. I know that's not the case with Zero because I had the cassette ze release of Zero originally with all the B-sides and stuff. No. That was the same as the CD track listing, but if I remember correctly, a couple tracks were added. Anyway, the point being, this is a really good song. This is a heavy song. It's a sneering song. It's got a cool kind of groovy um, verse, and then it blows up into like a heavier chorus. And I think the one of the lines in the chorus is, I'm sick of the same old shit. It's just like this nasty, like that Billy Corgan, like angry, melancholy era delivery. It's just a really good song. It's a really fun song. And um, it could very easily be like, I mean, as with a lot of, pumpkins b-sides i think with a lesser band you'd be like how was that not a single let alone not released on an album you know so it's just a really strong track number six is lover this is a james eha song so uh the version that i'm talking about is an acoustic version of the song and i'm not sure whether it's a demo or whether eha intended the song to just be completely acoustic but it's just a very kind of sweet you know like if you know eha's stuff especially from that era he was writing very kind of like sweet almost like beatles-esque paul mccartney-esque pop songs and he has a very kind of gentle voice, so that really suits his singing style. Um, and this is just, a, I think, like a really superlative example of his tracks from that era. Number five, Set the Ray to Jerry. This is a really interesting song. I think this is on the 1979 single. And it has um, like a, kind of a very driving bass line and then like a very, like it's all, I think the drums are all toms. And maybe like, like snares thrown in as accents, but the main kind of rhythm is played on the toms. And then it has this kind of ethereal, very echoey guitar and very laid back vocal performance from Billy Corgan. And it's very, it's kind of like, it kind of sounds like The Cure. Um, and it kind of sounds like other kind of stuff from that era, but it also very much sounds like The Pumpkins and it sounds very much of the 90s. So you can hear that 80s influence on Billy Corgan and his songwriting and the way the band was playing, but it's also very much like of the era in which it took place. It's a really cool song. It's a very interesting song. And it's very atypical because it doesn't lean really far into being a quiet song, but it doesn't lean really far into the grooviness of it either. It kind of exists in this in-between space. It's really interesting. Number four on my list of super underrated Smash Pumpkin songs of Melancholy in the Infinite Sadness era is Jupiter's Lament. This is on the, the Tonight Tonight single, and this is there's actually multiple versions of this song. So I'm talking specifically about the version that's on the Tonight Tonight single on the Aeroplane Flies High box set. And it's another acoustic song. Um, and I, I've talked about other Corgan acoustic songs and other videos that we've done here. And I really love that sparse, just like guitar vocals. And you can hear the country influence starting to come into those songs in the Melancholy era. And I mean, if you're familiar with Billy Corgan's work and you've followed it throughout his career, and especially Cotillions, which is the solo record that he released as William Patrick Corgan in November of 2019, which is the month in which we're filming this, that came out like a week ago, I think that record. That's like full on Americana, country, bluegrass influence all over it. And those are really great, really beautiful songs. I'll talk more about that in different videos. But this really kind of like, this to me is like the beginning of that era in songwriting that has a very distinct feel and always when i hear those songs like when i listen to cotillions really makes me think of those melancholy acoustic b-sides so that's jupiter's lament number three this is going to be a bit of a weird choice this is a live rehearsal in the studio of the instrumental part of a song i don't know if vocals were ever written by the song the song is called zoom I don't know if they ever wrote vocals to this, if their vocals were ever recorded. This is just an instrumental run-through of the song. But this, to me, is like when I hear this, I'm like, if that song had been developed 
if they had put a verse vocals on it and gotten together like a good chorus and thrown in maybe like a bridge and a guitar solo, that could have been like one of the great heavy songs on Melancholy. And the fact that it's not even on the record, that they didn't even record vocals to it, just to me indicates how much amazing material they were creating at that time. The fact that they didn't even really need that song. It's the, the, so there's an excerpt from the riff, the verse riff on this song on the pistachio melody. Pistachio medley is like a 28, 27 or 28 minute song that just takes all these riffs from songs that were left off of Melancholy and puts them in a row. So you can just listen to like 28 minutes of riffs, 27 minutes of riffs. And this is on that. And when I first heard that, when I got the Zero single, when I was whatever, like 12 or 13, I was like, man, that riff is awesome. And here is the song that that riff comes from. And it's a really strong track. Um, it's got a really great melodic chord progression in the chorus. And I really think this could have been like a all-time Pumpkins banger if they had finished it. And it's just, it's a really cool... Uh, like unfinished example of, of all the talent potential that they had at that time. Number two on my list of super underrated Smashing Pumpkin songs from Melancholy and Infocitus slash Airplane Flies High era is Blank. This is again off of the Tonight Tonight single and this is again one of those acoustic songs. And just, the song is just so beautiful. I just love listening to it. It's The lyrics are really incredible and very evocative. And, um, you know, I've said in other videos that we've done, like Melancholy very easily could have been split down the middle awesome catchy heavy songs really great emotional acoustic songs like almost like a black and white record and i think a bit have been would have been probably more commercial and more expected if that's a word that you can use and instead they just threw in everything but the kitchen sink and put in all this stuff that they're experimenting with and all these new sounds and i think that was very bold and brave of them and i think that's what makes melancholy the album that it is but the, it's it's really interesting to think that it could have been this very different thing because they were writing so many awesome heavy rock songs and so many awesome acoustic songs so number one on my list of super underrated songs from melancholy in the infinite sadness era is mouths of babes i freaking love this song so something that's really interesting about this song is it's if you listen to it it's almost the same song as Quiet, which is on Siamese Dream. And I wonder if that's why they left it off Melancholy. I think it's tuned lower than Quiet because it feels heavier and it's a little bit more laid back in the vocal approach. So it has more of like a melodic um, vocal line to it. But the chord progressions and also the structure of the song are almost identical to Quiet. I, I just love this. It's so good. It's melodic. It's heavy. It's got really great catchy chord progressions, really great melody, really interesting lyrics. And the drum performance, as always, is awesome. Obviously, if you're a Pumpkins fan, you know Jimmy Chamberlain is the man, and that's one of the reasons I love this band so much, him and his interplay with, with Billy Corgan. So this track is The Mouse of Babes. And like I said, it's on the Zero single. It's a B-side. It's just so, so good. Like, this is one of my favorite Pumpkin songs, probably like top 25 or 30 or so. I love it so much. Um, so this has been my seven super underrated tracks from the Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness era. My name is Will. This is Vinyl Appreciation Society. Um, as always, put your uh, thoughts on what your favorite pumpkins, uh, underrated pumpkin songs are from this era in the comments. You can subscribe if you feel like it. That would be awesome. That always helps. Thank you so much. And we will see you next time.